Uh, hello, everybody. We are here with uh, Owen Mackin. He is in a film that is coming out this week. It's called Till Death. And he stars uh, yeah, uh, opposite somebody you might have heard of, I don't know, uh, Megan Fox. Um, and uh, he, the, let me give you the rundown. It, uh, this is a woman is left handcuffed to her dead husband as part of a sick revenge plot, unable to unshackle. She has to survive as two killers arrive to finish her off. Owen Mackin, how are you today, sir? I am good, sir. I'm good. How are you doing? I should say, how are you tomorrow? Uh, you're yeah, right here in the future. <laughs> hey, can you give me the winning lottery tickets? Um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is this was. Uh, I have to tell you, I was I was surprised by this movie. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Mm. No offense, but I was just like immediately. Uh, I was hooked, and uh, it, I was I was thoroughly impressed really had a good time with it. Um, how did you get this part opposite Megan Fox? Well, I think, for, I mean, first of all, I, I'm really glad you liked it. And I think uh, it, it's, um, it's an Australian director called Scott Dale. And, I, and I, I'm with you. I think he did this really, really, really great job where he just made this really compelling movie. When I, when I watched it the first time a couple of weeks ago in a, in a sort of cinema test here with him, I was like, this is great. I, I, he, he's done a really great job. It just doesn't stop moving. And I, I just found the whole thing to be really compelling. And I thought Megan was great. So I'm with you in this one. Because sometimes you watch stuff, you're like, oh, I like this. But this, I was like, this is, this is fun. I'm digging yeah. this. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I sat down to watch it. Uh, and I thought, OK, I'm going to get a sense of it. And it's, it was super late. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to get an idea of what's happening and then really get my coffee in the morning and do my thing and mm. you know an hour and a half later i'm like oh wow <laughs> so I, a, I was like whoa that was good you know so you, yeah you kept me up it was a lot of fun uh yeah. let's talk about your character mark he's he's pretty interesting huh yeah so it, it's i mean i met scott uh, i read the script and i, I thought it was really interesting and I, and I thought i liked scott's ideas on it because i thought the way the script was it's a it's a strange concept and i think it has to be done properly and i thought his ideas from a visual and tonal point of view were cool and then we, he was like okay by the way so you're going to play a sociopath and i was like yeah all right okay we can we, we, we can we can talk on that and then uh yeah, he we I did a psychology degree and, and he sent me a bunch of stuff. I wanted to make the character of Mark, um, you know, a sociopath. You also kind of sort of uh, understand to an extent and you kind of like at the same time, hopefully, mm -hmm. because you also, you also understand his motivations and feel a bit sensitive for him. But he is also a really dark, messed up character. Um, so I was like, sure, this sounds like fun. And then that's kind of what happened. Yeah, really dark. It reminded you reminded me of my ex uh <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> okay yeah are you talking yeah. you talking about the handcuff are you talking about the handcuff part or is it the the, the, the darkness part <laughs> all of it <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh you know you uh, i'm trying not to spoil but you easily have one of the best scenes in the film um right and so how, okay, how long did it take to apply the makeup for that scene? Ah, uh, um, it, it, it took a hot minute. It took a hot minute. Um, we, it, the, the crew in Bulgaria were, were really great. I met this makeup artist, uh, this guy who's got these incredible, incredible stories of, of stuff he did as a, as a, as a, a growing up in Bulgaria. And I think, he's, I think he's seen some things. So uh, he was really, uh, specific about about kind of the the um the visceral elements that came with some of the makeup of it uh so it, it took a couple of hours i think and i just sat there and he just told me stories about all these you know dead people he's seen i was like oh great fun <laughs> yeah you, i was like all right <laughs> did you uh get any advice from him on how to play certain scenes or i got advice now not to be dead and I had to, <laughs> to not end up dead. That's what I got. So, <laughs> I was like, you tell me the movie here. Or... <laughs> I mean, but your character is pretty funny because, well, not funny. Funny is a stupid word. 
uh, impactful because uh, you 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 have a good ten minutes of solid, you know, really solid screen time and um, mm. uh, to kind of set up who this person is. How did you pack everything in there? You mentioned, and that I was that was something I was going to go into. You uh, mentioned your psychology degree. Sure. Uh, so maybe how how uh, first tell. Well, 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 I, I didn't do a master's. I, I did a BSc, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Okay, so I you had an understanding course. of that. Now, how, how did you use your knowledge of psychology to maximize your screen time? Well, well it was interesting. Myself and Megan, Megan chatted about this. I mean, you have to kind of make these characters believable where you understood why, you know, uh, uh, why they were together in the first place, but also the fact that he was highly manipulative. Um, and the only way you kind of get away with that uh, to an extent is, is, I mean, it's a very dark character because he's manipulative and he's also an, a, a, an emotional abuser. And I think the way to kind of utilize that properly is, is, is by understanding uh, the charm that he would use, you know? So a lot of the thing was just these kind of constant charming effects. And, and we also, we did this, we didn't really, we didn't want to make him a, a, um, a character that you kind of uh, felt any sympathy for because he's a horrible, horrible character. But if there was a moment where you had doubt, and, uh, and, and that's what that kind of character would create. He would create these elements of, of um, um, doubt for both her and for the audience. We're like, oh, maybe this guy's not so bad. Maybe he's just misunderstood. So it's trying to find those layers in, 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 in that time to build it up. So you're like, actually, maybe we do root for this. So the idea being that you do kind of root for them just enough. So it kind of uh, it doesn't come across as being as being too, too kind of top heavy. Um, and basically make it a bit more, uh, uh, give it a bit more interesting layers to it. So it was fun. I mean, it's really weird. It's really weird playing dark characters like that. And and the the fun thing about working with Megan on that was because we got to talk a lot about kind of like what would work, what wouldn't work. And I was like, well, what would what would make what would make this all weirder? And what would make you want to do this, and not want to do this? And so myself, Megan, and Scott were trying to find that dynamic, or um, weird enough, you know, to where it wasn't like somebody going, yeah. Uh, uh, you know like but yeah. just just enough you know just just enough to creep and i think that's also the weirdest thing about it because aside from the actual kind of the, you know the the the, the violence of what, of what the whole film is and the kind of you know and it's really important that you set that up so you understand what what her character is going through and what she's kind of fighting up against mm. you know and i think it's important to kind of establish that but also you know you, you, you want it to be you want it to understand why she as a character would have been sucked into this relationship in the first place and why she's been controlled and why she wants to get out of it and also how difficult it is and i think it's it's when you're with someone that dangerous and that twisted you know it gets it gets as proven it gets difficult to get out of it so ah. it, <laughs> you know no kidding oh. yeah <laughs> so uh. I mean, it's kind of, it's weird playing a character like that. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, <laughs> it was a weird, weird, weird experience, but you know, yeah. Yeah, you did it well. Um, so again, avoiding spoilers, uh, how did you, uh, I mean, like, were those outdoor scenes on a soundstage or? I mean, so we actually we actually shot that movie in the summer in Bulgaria, and it was about okay. twenty five degrees Celsius. So you're talking, it was about 80, 85. I'm American. I can't convert. I'm sorry. It was about about eighty eighty five. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah, yeah yeah. So it was eighty five degrees. It was hot. It was, it was yeah, eighty five. Yeah. It was warm enough to be in your boxers. Like yes. You were. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, God, how are they doing that? Oh, no, look, look, I'll be honest. I'll be totally frank with you, right? Um, we shot this movie in, in August. It was one of the first movies to shoot again when the pandemic was happening. And uh, when I was in Bulgaria, for a lot of the stunt scenes, they had this great stunt guy. So he did a lot of that stuff. And, and I saw him, and this guy was in, like, great shape. And it was super cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's totally fine. That so totally a lot of the, looks like me. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, geez, he's much better looking and much cooler. <laughs> and I was like, totally, that's just, you should just do the line. Um, <laughs> so, so I actually, for a lot of that stunt stuff, I just uh, I traveled around Bulgaria and, uh, and uh, got fight scene. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeah, yeah. You got to play 10 minutes of an amazing character and then you got to see Bulgaria. That's, in a nutshell, that is what happened, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It, no, it, it was it was not terrible. 
you know, despite the fact that, um, oh God, I, again, I hate spoilers, but uh, despite the fact that he's, he plays the heavy uh, mm-hmm. of the film, I, you know, you have to admire how clever he was, so. It's kind of super twisted though, right? But at the same time, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I get it, but I, I get it because it's been time researching and talking about this. We're like, I guess if you're going to go to all these lengths, you know, you may as well do it properly, right? Sure, and, that's what, and that's what he did, you know? I mean, sure. It's like, it's like I guess it's like the thing, you know, when you kind of, uh, you want to plan your own funeral and you kind of sort of uh, you wish you could plan your own funeral, but also see who's there and see who shows up. Yeah, he just takes, yeah. He just takes a step further and just lays everything out. So, you know, everything Right down keeps, to the rose petals. Right down to the rose petals. All about the rose petals, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the icing. Um, so yeah, rose, what, rose petals and rose petals and creepy photographs. <laughs> creepy and then, photographs. Yeah. And if you ever see a tape recorder in your life, never press play. Don't it's and like you know what? Never. Don't hit don't put the needle on the just don't do it. No, no, it's never good. Idea. Like nothing ends well, you know. It's, it's either a ghost. It's either a ghost or someone telling you this that there's a ghost coming, or someone telling you they're coming to kill you. It's like none, none of it's great. You know? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I got to tell you, I again, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed the film. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Clever, clever script. Um, mm, how yeah. fast did you plow through that when you first read it? Um, actually, I read. I, I usually try and read a script and then then take a minute away from it and then forget about it and then go back and then read it again the next day because sometimes you read stuff and you've got conception and I thought actually what's interesting about the script was it was quite funny mm. and the script read quite funny but then it's also one of those ones where it's a danger if, if it's played too funny it won't kind of get across the gravitas and that's what I think Scott did really well because he still kept in some parts of the humor and like Megan's got this really dark sense of humor as well but it's still I think the important thing was was keeping that energy and that kind of that uh that sense of not knowing what was going to happen. And I think Scott did a great job at that. Like he, this is his first movie. This is the first movie he's directed. Yeah, that's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's insane. Wow. Um, and I think, I think when I came back and read it a second time, I was like, oh, this is like, especially from uh, leaving aside, like, I mean, I thought Jack and Cal and Jack Roth were, were, were superb in it. But leaving aside even that part, even just from my point of view, then I try and relook at it from just, first you read the script and you go back and just read it from a character point of view and then try and approach it from a different point of view so you don't see all the 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 immediate stereotypical things you see on it and then go all right what's what's actually deeper underneath this sure. so and, and then we had a chat about it well uh again i really enjoyed the film it was fun and uh you were you were a great you were a great villain i'm just going to come out and say you were you know the the villain so lots of fun and uh, Owen, thank you again so much for talking to me uh, about the upcoming movie. You guys, Till Death comes out in theaters in the U.S. July 2nd. Um, has, it, has it come out down in Australia or no? No, you know, I don't know what's happening because stuff has started to get locked down again here in various, oh, like Sydney's man. in a lockdown. Melbourne was in a lockdown until last week. Stuff has all changed. Cinema's having that, you know, terrible time whereby like, Harlan and is locked down again. Cinemas are just who knows. So you know the fact that it's going in cinema in the U.S. is great because everything's open over there. I guess cinema wise, but yeah, cinemas. I mean, you heard about the arc light, right? You know, don't I mean, get. Oh, I was, no, but just it, it, it's just cinemas. Just everywhere is like it's like do we do cinema? Do we not do cinema? And it's all just like I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like am I allowed to go to the cinema again today? And I'm like I don't know. You know, it's yeah. It's, yeah. I the first thing that I got to see in the cinema again was a quiet place too. And, oh, I haven't uh, seen that yet. Is it good? Oh, it's a solid movie. Solid. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Okay. But cool. uh, but it was just like, oh yeah, I remember this, <laughs> you know, and it just felt nice with the full sound yeah. system. And so yeah, but um, okay. So again, uh, thank you, thank you for taking the time. Uh, no, it's been a And um, you guys watch till death. It's in theaters uh, in the U.S. July 2nd. And Owen, uh, thank you. Stay safe. And everybody get vaccinated. We're tilting up. We're fading out. No, no, no. I know. That's what, that's what I was trying to stop in a second. Go, I could see it. I was trying to stop. And I was like, oh, no. Okay. That's all right. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for bearing with me on my, on my terrible Zoom. Zoom oh, technique. you know. You would think that would get better after a year, but no. No, no. no. It's still powered by hamsters on a little wheel. So. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you so much. It's and best of luck on your release. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Give a good evening. Cheers, buddy. Take care.